Hey everyone, Mark from Coast of the Country. Today's video, we're gonna service this little um, spinning reel, um, which went for a bit of a swim actually. This is my little guardy, uh, garfish outfit that I take guarding and it gets an absolute hiding basically. That um, I use this one for wading when I, um, I'm only up in shallow water out in sea, catching guardies and occasionally if you've got a fish on, um, you can actually dunk it in the water and things like that. So last time I took this out, I had a little, um, little baby rescue boat um, and we copped a wave over the back and we ended up with about this much water in the bottom of the boat, which is fine, it drains out by itself, but the reel was sitting on the floor, basically got halfway up with salt water. So I've noticed it's getting a really tight, a bit sticky. Um, it's had an absolute flog in this reel. It's been run for about three seasons, haven't cleaned it, haven't washed it. It's been been abused, should be should be serviced and looked after more than that. But anyway, I thought today we'll give it a birthday, pull it apart, grease everything, check everything out and um, see what we can do with it. Right, so the first thing I need to do is just obviously take this rig off um, and we'll just thread the line back through. I'll rig this up again later. So it's just got a bit of, um, I think it's about eight to 10 pound braid on this. I can't even remember what I put on it. Might be eight actually. So it still works quite smooth. It's just got a little bit of a tight spot now and again. Um, so anyway, we'll take this off. You can probably see here, it's absolutely covered, covered in tuna oil. Um, when you're burling up, um, I've got tuna oil scales, guardy scales all over it. Um, you can see the handle's really bad. Uh, it's been a good knock around reel, but um, yeah, needs a bit of work. So anyway, we'll get this um, off. I'll have to clean this rod up as well. So we'll try and get that off. That's tight because it's all jammed up with tuna oil. So there we go, that's off. Little finure, finure, whatever you want to call it. I think it's 2000 series. Yeah, Affinity 2000. See the bit of corrosion there. She's definitely, had, it's had a couple of dunks in its life. Uh, when I was wading and dunked it, I did rinse it off with fresh water, but that's as far as I got. Um, I just um, had a bit of a day off, so I thought I'd give it a bit of a service. So you can see, I'll clean this rod up again properly later as well. This is a little um, ferret rod. Um, I don't usually spend much on rods. Um, I think normally I spend about 60 to 80 bucks on a rod. This is one of the dearest rods I've bought at the time. I think they were about 120 bucks, had some stuff from Christmas and stuff. And anyway, on the way home, I still remember in the car, this is years ago, um, it didn't even survive the trip home. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be. The tip section snapped off. Uh, we had a 400K car trip and with a couple of kids in the back. And um, yeah, so we snapped the tip off it before it even seen the water. So I've basically just cut that short. Probably has affected the way the rod works, but it's still catching gars and anyway. All right, so we're gonna keep this pretty simple. Um, as you can see, she's had a bit of a hiding. Quite a bit of um, tuna oil, bits of um, corrosion and stuff on the surface. First thing to do is just take this spool off. Um, all I do is just keep things on a um, clean towel. I've got a wet rag here, which is good for cleaning off um, all the surface uh, surface rubbish, like all your dirt, grime, grease. Um, in this case, tuna oil. So you can see this comes off quite easily. It's gonna come up nice, but that's all superficial stuff, which has really nothing to do with anything. You see this line's been on there for quite a while now, probably, I think it's three years, starting to fade on the outside. Probably only ever used the first, you know, 20, 30 meters. So what I could do is peel a bit of this off and get down to some fresh line if I wanted to, but um, that's not too bad at the moment. So anyway, we'll slowly pull this apart. Um, this is basically, just a quick um, way of cleaning things up a bit. So just a um, bit of water on a nice soft cloth is as good as anything for cleaning cleaning off grime and whatever. You can use um, cleaning agents if you want. You just got to be a little bit careful um, damaging the outside of your reel. <laughs> no, it really seriously make much difference on this one probably not so anyway i'll just quickly give this a bit of a clean up all 
Right, we'll just quickly take this handle off. We'll just clean it as we go. And we'll get right inside it, grease up the um, gears and things. So that's just a little, little locking screw that goes on the end of the handle so you can swap it to left and right hand. So that's basically just been a bit of um, bit of a cap. That's only plastic with a bit of coating over it, I think. So that's not very critical at all, but we'll clean all the rubbish off while we're here. Yeah, it's basically plastic. Put that aside. Got a little rubber seal under the um, clutch adjuster here, which is actually a good feature. It does stop a lot of salt water getting in if you do dunk it. One thing I've noticed is the line feeder roller is seized solid. So we'll quickly take that out as well. Let's get a bigger screwdriver. These are prone for getting a lot of salt water in there. Stuck in there pretty well, thanks to all the tuner oil. So it's a little bit tight due to all the gunk and that in there. You just gotta be careful not to scratch anything too bad. Like I said, this reel has been abused. You should look after them better than this one. This is my um, knock around travel reel. You can see all the muck stuck in there. All my reels in my boat uh, generally stay in the boat and they get looked after a lot better. This one is literally go waiting, um, traveling top setup. So again, we're just cleaning out all the rubbish that builds up over time. That's pretty well stuck in there pretty well. There's a little bush in there that normally comes out, but that is jammed nice and tight. That should just slide off. That is crazy tight, seized on there, corroded on I should say. There's an actual bearing in there, normally they're just a bush, but... Try and lever it off more even. There we go. There we go, give that a bit of a clean up. Righty oh, so there is a little bit of wearing in there. Sometimes they've just got a little bush that runs around. Let's clean a bit of the rubbish off here. It's actually still turning. Fill that up with inox. Put my finger on the back end of it, literally fill it up totally, and then we'll push on it and we'll get a bit into that bearing. Or we can just take it out like that. So there's a little bearing. See if it actually turns. Well, that's actually turning quite freely, so that may have survived. Oh, you can buy new bearings for these things. You can order them online. Um, I'm not going to worry about it too much. 
So this is not a professional how to service a reel. This is just how to clean one and see how I do it. Right, hey, so that's that little runner done. Next thing we'll do is we shall, I'll leave this, actually these arms alone actually, because they're actually working quite okay. Let's give them a bit more of a clean up. Right, so that is a mixture of tuna oil and actual corrosion. It's taken off the black layer coating down to like the cast aluminium or whatever it is they make that piece out of. So not much we can do about that bit. Not Again, like I said, I'm not too worried about this reel. I just want it so it's a little bit smoother and um, should get another couple of years out of it. No problems at all. That part's actually not too bad. It's quite smooth. Again, just get a bit of the grime off it. Take this handle out. See all the tuna oil and rubbish stuck in there. This does absolutely nothing um, as far as the performance of the reel. But while we're cleaning, cleaning it, we'll just give this a quick clean as well. This is actually turning quite well, which has surprised me. Sometimes I'll get a lot of muck stuck in there as well in the actual um, bush inside the handle and sometimes you gotta pull them apart to clean them as well. But I'll give this a little bit of a squirt of inox. So we just use an MX3, MX8, which is, that's basically just the inox. That's quite a, uh, it's like WD-40, you may as well say. Um, we use this for everything on the farm as well as um, fishing stuff. Um, MX8 grease, inox grease is quite good as well. It's um, very good quality. Um, yeah, it doesn't react with plastics and things like that. Only thing I don't like about this grease, it absolutely stinks. If you get it on your fingers, it's, it smells really like, just a really bad chemically type smell, um, which um, hangs around for ages. It's really hard to get off your hands. So that joint there is just where you fold up the handle if you want to. So you can fold up a bit of storage. So that's pretty much clean. I'll just give this a bit of a shake. Just get all the rubbish off there. We'll do now is just take these washers off the front of this um, shaft where the spool goes. So we'll just put them face down so we know which way they go. Take a little gear for the ratchet for the um, ratchet to make noise when you got a fish on. Take off this little little Phillips head screw which basically stops the nut undoing. Generally these are left handed thread. Not 100% sure with this one. Oh maybe it's not. Maybe it's the standard thread. It is too. The reel I did just recently was the other way around. So just be aware of that. Sometimes they turn the other way to undo. That's just normal, that one. Right, so that should take that off now. So it's not too bad inside. A little bit of um, salt sitting there. I did rinse this off with fresh water the first time. Um, and I think when I hosed the boat out last time, I may have hit this with the, with the fresh water hose. I'm not really sure. Anyway, so we'll do this bit in a, in a minute. But first we'll just keep Keep cleaning along here. See the salt builds up a little bit underneath um, the rotor or whatever it's called as well. Um, if that builds up a heap, you'll hear a bit of a scratching noise when you're reeling if that's spinning around. So, like I said, this reel still functions okay. It's just it needs a service. So the bail arm on this works quite well. Um, if you find you have problems um, in here, all it is is just a spring both sides, a little pin on a spring normally that locks it one way or the other. 
Um, you can give these a bit of a hit with inox as well. This one's not too bad, but I will give it a bit of a, give it some love. Uh, mixed minds about inox and whether it, um, or even WD-40, whether it um, puts fish off, as in the, if you get it all over your reel or your line and things like that. Um, I know cray fishermen that when they used to work on the trawlers, they used to use things like um, WD-40 for fish attractant, spray it on bait, so work that out. So I don't know whether it puts them off or attracts them or what, but I would say motor oil and things like that is a bit different. That would, I wouldn't want to put that on my bait or have it all over my line because that could, um, could put fish off, plus it's probably not good for the environment. But... Alright, so that's pretty much okay. I'll just put a dab there, which does really nothing, but stop corrosion on that shaft where this touches. That's pretty much it there. Put a little bit in the bail trip. That's the one that's when you turn, when you wind the handle, as this turns around it, the pin flicks it and then trips the bale over. So just make sure there's a little bit of lubricant in there. Keep that one nice and lubed up. Wipe off any excess. So this is just superficial um, cosmetic stuff on here. That is not going to affect the reel at all. It's not going to win any beauty contests either, but that's okay. All right, next bit. So back to this. Um, you can get a little paintbrush as well, just to flick out all the um, major bits of grit, sand, corrosion, whatever, before you start pulling it right apart. Because you don't want to open this up and then have all this rubbish from the outside dropping in into your gears and things. So let's give it a little bit of a clean. Alright, next bit. So we'll take off this plate here, which will get us access to some bearings. It's normally a one-way bearing in here. Not sure if this has one or not. Keep all these screws together. There's a little plate. It's actually in pretty good nick. I thought there'd be a lot more corrosion in here. It's got the original grease in there, it's still quite okay. I feel it's not as smooth as it could be. It's not too bad though. Right, I'll take this side plate off. Thought that would have just come straight out. I think it's normally just like a little plastic cover. Gummed up, I reckon. There we go. Oh, look at that. Nice. So, <laughs> that would have a lot to do with um, why it's a little bit rough to run. So, quite a bit of salt there. Salt and um, tuna oil, whatever you want to call it. Bit of a mixture. So, I'll get our little paintbrush, just give that a quick quick clean off this is only a plastic cover it's got like a chromey chrome plate or chrome paint I should say over it so that's really as good as that's ever gonna get so put that aside yeah so in here that's got some um, bit of rubbish in there so we'll get most of that out so it doesn't fall inside when we take it apart A bit better already but again that's only cosmetic that's not really doing much try and get this cover off I'll have to take this front one off first a little rubber cover there
Everything's just a little bit tight and gummed up. That should come off easily, but it's not. It's a little built up corrosion. There we go. So that's just some little plastic, um, like a little ramp by the look of it. So that something slides along there. By the look at that. So now these screws out, this should hopefully come apart with that rubber out of the room. So we'll gently lever that up there. That spindle should probably stay there, but it's wanting to come with it. All right, well, it can come with us. That's the crank gear on that side. Oh, there we go, it's falling out now. So not too bad inside. It's not brilliant, but there's still quite a bit of the original grease uh, in there, which is still actually not too bad. So that's a bonus. The bearings actually don't feel too bad. So anyway, we'll just give this a bit of a clean up as well and I'll re-grease it. A little bit of salt down the corner there. So I want to keep some of this original grease in there. If it's um, if it's not contaminated, like it's not super gritty and that, I'll leave it in there. So that bit's not too bad. We'll just give this a bit of a clean up. Sometimes you can get these out without pulling the whole thing apart. In this case, you can't. So I'll take this um, anti-reverse um, lever out. Just look like it's just that screw there. Keep that screw separate. So this little lever here should now just pull straight out at the back, hopefully, like that. And the spring went flying, so we're going to put that back in later. So we'll just clean it as we go again. Clean this little spring. All that does is um, puts a bit of tension on the side of that lever and sort of snaps it into place when it locks over one side or the other. So there's a little bit of grease still in there, which is okay. I'll leave that on there. So it can go there. So that spring sits in this square groove there. It sort of snaps back and forth when it locks in like that. You can see a lot of rubbish on the end here. where it's been open to the outside and it's slowly got in there. So what's happened here, this is like a little cast aluminium piece, cast alloy of some description. And all that's happened is a bit of corrosion has got on the end and it's bubbled off the paint that was on there. So it really hasn't affected it too much. Inside still looks okay, so the outside part is yeah bubbling up a little bit. Nothing to cry about. Go okay, there. Let's try and keep all this grit outside of the gears. Take that gear out now. It's got a little bearing on the end. Oh, which is pretty tight. Wow, there's half the problem. In fact. I might have to order a bearing for that. That is solid. That's been turning in the housing, I'd say. So that's why she's a little bit tight. That bearing's fine. This one is stuck. So, close your eyes, people. Oh, that is solid. Wow. Okay, that's, that's knackered. Right, that's going to have to put a new bearing in there, which means I'll probably have to order one. Um, yeah. I'm amazed how smooth that was without that. Oh, there's the problem. That's that's an easy fix. We'll just stick a new bearing on it. That'll make a huge difference. All right, we'll put that aside for a minute. We'll just keep cleaning the rest of this while we're at it. The rest of this is silky smooth. Um, 
that's really nice that's nice there's a one-way bearing in here so what that means is this will only turn one way so that will that's like your um, instant anti-backlash or whatever they want to call it so this bearing can only spin one way so you can see it turns that way locks the other way turns that way locks the other way so there you go and what happens when you do that little um, lever here this um, backlash or whatever you want to call it actually disengages that bearing off thing so I reckon it flicks this over somehow inside here I'm not exactly sure how that works it pushes it over like that I reckon and then it can see it can spin both ways now and when it when you let it go then it locks so there's a one-way bearing in there somewhere that's working really well I'm just gonna leave all that alone the grease doesn't look too bad either. There's obviously a bit of grit there, like it's a big chunk of sand there. We don't want that in the gears. So I'm pretty sure that last bearing in there was spinning on the housing. So what I'll do is clean a little bit of that crab out on the bottom. If this was totally chockers with sand, I'd absolutely strip it, like degrease the whole thing and then regrease it but because it's actually not too bad i'm going to leave leave it alone because definitely that bearing's the the problem what i'll do is i will put a little bit of um bit of inox grease in there this is this um grease i'm talking about what i do is i just spray it into oh, oh that's the wrong one <laughs> that was inox don't do that won't make any difference anyway this is the spray grease oh that's a bit better a bit thicker spray that in there a little bit of inox mixed in that won't make much difference at all. So this grease is actually pretty good quality. What I'll do is I'll just put a bit on all the um, gears. Auto leveler, that's like a little worm gear, spiral gear that goes back and forth and that keeps your line nice and even on this spool. So all this stuff in here is actually not bad, so I'm going to leave it alone. Like I said, if it was all full of sand and grit, you just degrease the whole thing, pull all these gears out. You can take that screw there out, and this this shaft will come straight out. But feeling that, that's pretty good. Like it's actually for that to slide back and forth like that and drive that um, auto feed gear as well with no resistance at all. That's I'm pretty happy with that. So if that was a bit sticky, all you'd have to do is take that screw there out, pull that shaft out. These gears just drop out, and then you can pull out the other back gear as well. And that comes out through this one here. You undo that and then it releases it. So. But I'm actually pretty happy with all that at the moment. Like I said, she's a knock around reel. I will put a little dob of glue, uh, not glue, inox in that back corner. And then what we'll do, we'll um, put a bit of grease in there as well. You can use, um, there's proper real grease you can buy at fishing shops and stuff. You can use Vaseline if you're desperate. I think that makes a huge amount of difference. Right, let's have a quick look at this um, bearing. So that is really stuck on there. Give that a drown in inox. Make sure there's no sand, salt stuck in the bottoms of these because they can make them feel really rough as well. Because one grain of sand in there will make it all crunchy when you're using the reel. So considering this has had a swim, it's actually not bad at all. Definitely if you um, flush it out with fresh water the second you get home, it does help. But really you should strip them straight away, clean them up, grease them all up. But like I said, she's a bit of a knock around reel, so I wasn't too worried about it at the time. But what I need to do is get this bearing off and or freed up. That is tight. I can't even budge that. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Try and get that off without busting gears and things. Okay, that's had a bit of a soak now. Let's give that wipe a bit of that excess inox off. That grease has been drowning inox now, so I will replace that bit if we get this thing going. Um, I'm just trying to get in here with a little fine white brush to get the corrosion out between the bearing and the gears. I'm 
One thing I've noticed now is that gear actually moves on that shaft. So it's kind of, when that bearing's pressed on, it actually holds it up against there and there's a little washer in there, I think. So it's just a matter of working on it and we'll try and get this bearing off without snapping a gear. So I'm just gonna try and get in there, gently lever it. Okay, there we go. So that's the bearing off. That gears, oh yeah, that's how that works. That locks into that little spline on the shaft there. So you must be able to replace that gear if it was worn. But we're more interested in this bearing and how it is sheathed. So I have to try and get another bearing for that. I may even have one in the other little shed. I'll have a look. Got a few for different electronic things. So I've got a whole bearing range. So we'll see if we can find one. Right, as luck would have it, I have a second hand bearing that I've pulled out of something else. Uh, this one's actually quite okay. I've ordered a new bearing um, online. Couldn't get anything locally. So that bearing's actually working, no worries at all. So what I'll do is I'll put that in just temporary anyway until the new one arrives. So that was lucky. That must be a fairly common sort of bearing. So I don't know if you can see that or not. You probably can't. Put a dot on in. So you can see that bearing. That's cruising around there. No worries now. So that one's working. All right. Um, I'll put a drop of inox on that while we're at it. Can't hurt it. Um, now, what I also found while I was playing around with this, um, that screw there, which holds the that little rack which slides back and forth, that's been loose as anything. So give that a bit of a tighten while we're here. And I think I will take this back cover off because I noticed there's a heap of corrosion around the back of that. So I don't think this really does much. It's probably like a little end cap to that pinion gear there where you can probably lubricate it, but I will take it off just while we're at it. So that's pretty well stuck on there a bit, isn't it? Oh yeah, there's the back of that that um, arm. Yeah, I'll show you that in a sec. Oh yeah, there's a bit of corrosion under there. Give that a bit of a clean up. Difficult to see, but that's that little um, it's that little rack there that slides back and forth. Well, it's supposed to anyway. And that's the end of it there. You can see turning around, but there's quite a bit of um, salt and stuff stuck in there as well. It's still turning pretty free. There's quite a bit of grease on there still, so I think we probably got away with that. But I'll get rid of all that rubbish. As you can see there, that's all nasty sandy looking stuff so I'll get rid of that while we're at it give that a quick hit with a brush bit of a blast Yeah, so that's the end of that little um, sliding rack thing there. So I might even put a little bit of grease on there. All right, that can go back on. We'll just start putting it back together. Like I said, when I get a brand new bearing arrives, I'll put that in as well. Not too worried about this reel. Stick a bit of grease down the back of this. Can't hurt it. You don't want to go too much, to have too much grease in there, but that should be okay. All right. 
So next thing we do is we can now stick this gear back in. I'll put some grease on that as well. So we've got a new bearing on there, the other bearing's okay. So that's got the gear in. So now I've got to get this spring in there at the same time. I'll put this in first actually. Put a little bit of grease on the end of this. Clean out a bit of that corrosion. Make a bit of grease on the end of that. Bit where the spring hits. Bit there for luck. So it's just a matter of pushing that spring down into there. So that's in position there now. So it just flicks back and forth like that. So that's, we're just going to make sure that spring stays down. Like that. A bit tricky. Not sure which way. There you go. It stays better that way by the look of it. All right. put that little screw in there later. I'll just put this cover on first in case it all falls apart on me. Put a tiny bit of grease around there, not that it probably needs it. That bearing's okay. Pop a bit more grease in this um, gear down here as well. So that's definitely still working okay. Just get a couple of screws in there quickly so before it falls apart. So now we can put our little lug on the end here. So that's our one way bearing. Locks that way, can't turn it, flick that over, it turns both ways. So that's working okay. What's next? Let's get this plate back on. What have we forgotten? Get these little rubber things stuck in there like that. And there's this other plastic thing here. Not 100% sure what that's for. Where did that go? Over this side. So that went like that. squeeze down. I think that's to do with the tripping of the bail arm. I'm not 100% sure about that. Alright, it's got that one done up. Put this little plate on here. Do I need grease on there? Probably won't hurt. I'll put a little bit on that brass shaft there. That does go up and down. Stick that on there. Which way? So in there is actually got a fair bit of grease in there already. That's all working okay. I'll just put a little tiny dab in there. Don't overdo it. Work this on. squirt of inox just there with that end of that thing rubs right I'll just quickly chuck the handle in and see if everything's wanting to move all right 
Oh, there we go. Nice and smooth. Well, that's a lot better with that bearing. Like I bought one. Let's put a little tiny bit of inox in there while we're at it. That's good. Okay, we've got the rest back together now. So we can put our rotor on. Nice and snug. And we'll put a screw in this side where there's a flat on the nut, stopping coming undone. Oh, I need the nut. All right. A little bit more. Gunk stuck in there. All right, so we'll put our washers on. Put a tiny bit of grease on that as well, on that shaft there. Even though I just hit that with a bit of um, inox, we'll just do a really thin coat of grease on there. So, next step is to put this little bearing back in here. of inox so this bearing's still okay bearings turning no worries at all so I'll just clean up our um, roller where our line or our braid goes through these are one of the first bearings that um, stop working generally get a bit gummed up they definitely get more salt water on them than anywhere else. It's as clean as we can get it. Pop our bearing in the right side will help. What I'll do is I'll just quickly give that a good spray as well. Even though it's kind of a sealed bearing. Fill it up with inox and if you squeeze them a bit you'll pressurise some of the inox inside to the bearing as well. Like I said, this is just to keep this reel going for a little bit longer. Not too worried about it at all. So that's got to go that way first. And that bearing holds on there like that. Sits like that. And this piece goes in here like that. Goes in a bit better. We'll just triple check, make sure that's going to turn. That's free, no worries at all. Put a tiny dob of inox on that screw just so it would come out easy another day if I want it to. Do that nice and firm, just check that bearing again, that's nice and free. Get a cloth, get as much of that inox off as we can, any excess stuff. Okay, so what's next? Put our spool on. Oh, we can put this back piece on while we're at it. So we've got plenty of grease in there. A little bit of fluff from our rag. We don't want that in there. Whack a little bit more grease in the back of this. Just because I can. Can't hurt. I'll seal it up a bit as well. Stick our back cover on. Just a plastic little cover that holds that. Put our handle back on. Nice and smooth now. It's all good. Give us a tiny bit more of a clean there. Okay, that's pretty clean. Put that back on. Put our clutch screw back on. There we have it. That is nice and smooth now. And 
empty back. All right, well, we might get another season out of that anyway. And when the bearing arrives, I'll put that in the handle, the new one. Um, so yeah, all right, I'll just give this rod a quick clean up and we'll put it back on. All right, so we've got a rod here. We'll just give that a bit of a quick clean up. Basically, need the scaler, some of these guardy scales off. Anyway, all I'm doing is just digging out some of this tuna oil scales, muck off the bait, and then I'll, well, it's caked on there, isn't it? Just get a damp cloth. Comes off quite easily, actually. So there's really no excuse for not doing this after you go fishing, but sometimes you get home late, by the time you clean fish, it gets dark and that's my excuse anyway. Right, so as you can see, that's just a quick, quick rub there on the rod and um, that's come up, not too bad. So we'll just go through and do the whole thing and I won't bore you with that. I'll show you the end result. All right, so there we have it. Um, I'll just give that a bit of a clean. A bit of elbow grease is pretty much all it needed. Um, surprisingly, tuna oil came off quite well. I had to pick a heap of this out. Um, so that's the little rod. Um, not sure who makes it. What was it? Icon, presuming that's the name. Bad boys. Bad boys with the <laughs> ferret. Um, what is a little six foot, I think? Where's that written? 6.23, I think that might be. Anyway, um, it's been a good little rod. I would love to have um, love to get another one actually if they still make them. Um, and I'd like to put a uh, I'd like to try it with the tip still on it. Probably see whether it makes a difference or not. So I'll join that together. So then we'll get a wind this back down. It all moves nice and free now. It's only a little bit under there, which we're not worried about. So we'll get our reel. Pop him under there. Tighten it up. So hopefully we should get another season out of that. But that's nice and smooth now. Um, ready to rock and roll. Alright, so that is pretty much it. That's nice and smooth now. Um, like I said, this is just a um, bit of a knock around rod. It's, um, it's a good rod, but it's taken an absolute hiding. To be honest, I've pretty much abused this one, I'll just use it and put it away. Um, that's nice and smooth, I've ordered a bearing for it, when that comes in I'll just put that in. Um, yeah, great little rod for garfish and King George Whiting. Um, yeah, nice, so hopefully someone might have got a few little tips out of there what to do or probably what not to do. Um, yeah, so that's all happy to go. Um, if you're interested in the fishing side of things, there is a couple of videos I've got previously on catching garfish. I'm just getting started with um, filming a bit of that sort of stuff. Finish the boat, if you haven't seen that, that's ready. Um, finished that whole series, is about 23 videos. I think I'm only up to about, I don't know, what are we up to, 14 or something at the moment, can't even remember. So check that out if you're interested in boat repairs. Um, and you're just trying to get this video off the ground, or this channel off the ground, so if you could hit subscribe if you haven't already, and that'll help us out. So, all right, good fishing guys, I'll see you in the next one.